Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Tito Bonito Show. Tonight, we have burlesque icon Jezebel Thunder and fitness expert and star Jake Dupree. And now, give it up for your host, the Cuban Missile Crisis of Burlesque himself, Tito Bonito! What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Tito Bonito Show. There's a tit and a bone in there, so there's something for everybody up in here. Uh, welcome, welcome. I am so excited to have two of my really good friends on the show today, but not only that, they are also stars and icons uh, in their perspective field. So I'm very excited to chat them up, figure out some games so we can play and find out more about them. But let's get started with uh, this week really quick in the world. Shout out to Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion for coming up with the new single Wet Ass Pussy. And shout out to the petition that's going out to remove Kylie Jenner from the video. I don't hate the queen. I just think it's hilarious that she didn't do anything in the video except look fierce. Um, but I digress. Other than that, uh, you know, it's Kylie Jenner in that video is kind of like the gopher in Ariana Grande's God is a Woman video. It's just there. Like, for some reason, it's just there. Kind of annoying, kind of unnecessary. But uh, at least Kylie Jenner looks better than the gopher. Uh, also, remember to check me out. Show me some love on OnlyFans. You can check out the link in my bio. There is information for everything if you want to check out YouTube. Plus, I do want to mention really quick that today marks our one-year anniversary of the all-male burlesque review that uh, I was producing at Faultline, the incredible Faultline bar. So shout out to all of the male burlesque performers that helped make that such an amazing show, including Stevie Minx, who is in the chat right now. Also, if you like what you see today with the performers and you want to ask them any questions, right there, there's a question mark box. You can ask them in later episode and viewings. You won't be able to ask them that, but put it in the comments. Also, uh, if you like what you see, put throw some love, throw some hearts. That will equate to me as if you are cheering, okay? So it'll make me feel like people are actually watching, even though there's three people watching right now. So uh, without any further ado, I do want to bring out my first guest star of the evening. She is a, an incredible Renaissance woman. She can do no fucking wrong. Wait a minute. I'm trying to... There you go. Uh... I met her. She is my ride or die since day one here in. Uh... Oh, it says Jezebel is unable to join. So Jezebel, if you're in the chat, sign off and then send back in. Uh, but I love Jezebel Thunder so much. She is our first guest. We also have Jake in the comments right now. He is ready to get on the screen. He's ready to get on the fucking screen right now. We might actually have to bring him on first because uh, Jezebel is nowhere to be seen right now. And she was just in here a second ago. So I will say really quick, Jezebel was the first friend I made in Los Angeles. We performed together at the Bobby Burlesque show at M Bar. And here she is now. So I'm going to bring her on. And I have loved her since eight years ago. We just celebrated our anniversary in July. Eight years together, y'all. Eight years. There it is. There she is. My love, my <laughs> light. Give it up for Jezebel Thunder. Yay. I don't know why Thanks. it said that. That was really fucking weird. It happens, but I knew we would figure it out. Look at you looking all beautiful and amazing. I'm going to turn off these comments so people can just see you now <laughs> live in your glorious beautifulness. I was just Literally telling the people, comment. I was telling the people how uh, we just celebrated eight years of you having to put up with me. Yeah, it's been a struggle. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the worst part about that, y'all, is that's actually very truthful. That's not that's even not like... True. She's not even lying. I'm one. Of, what, I'm what you call an okay friend. I'm an okay friend. No, you're a great friend. Uh, but you are an amazing person. I love you. You've always I love you. know that you don't want me to do this, but I love bragging about you because there is, first of all, so much to brag about. <laughs> you are not only a phenomenal burlesque performer, you also are just a joy as a human being. You are literally the Clark Kent of burlesque if he was dope. <laughs> well he is dope right? well it means if he was a black woman if a white man was a black woman that's literally the only 
I don't even know what I'm saying right now. All I know what I'm saying is you you are one of the most hardworking people I've ever met. On top of that, you complain the least (laughs) of everyone I've ever met, which is in itself a feat. Uh, Burlesque, though. They should give awards for that. They really should. Listen, there's already a lot of awards that are being given out just to be given out. So, But speaking of of awards, I'm going to say really quick that I'm so proud to have seen the majority of your burlesque journey. But 21st century top performers in the world two years in a row. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was Miss like, Wait, that was only last year. That was two years. No, this year as well. And you were top 20. Yes. On top That's of that, true. you were also crowned one of the biggest achievements, which was Miss Exotic World Princess of Burlesque in 2018. Yay. You literally uh, been killing the game in... And on top of all of that, have you noticed that there's like an eight running in all of these numbers that we were saying today? 2008, 2018. Oh, yeah. No, excuse me. No, 2018. 2018. Yeah. Yeah, 2018 for 21st Burlesque and for uh, Burlesque Hall of Fame, knowing you, eight Ooh. years. And you're the eighth and ninth wonder of the world. <laughs> Shout true. out to the people in the back of your car. Where are you coming to us live from your vehicle? Wait, are there people in the back of my Oh, yeah, people keep walking by and staring at me. I'm sorry. I keep, like, looking over because I'm like, people are staring at me right now in my car. I'm because pulled over you. at the park. I should get out of the car, but they'll stare at me more because I don't have a mask on. Well, and we want, people should we, be wearing masks. That's completely true. <laughs> Actually, we won't even judge you if you need to turn the air conditioner on or anything. <laughs> Um, I'm in the shade. It's all good. Fine. No, you look fucking beautiful as well. On top of all of these things that you've done, you've taken the world by storm. You were an international performer. You Last year alone, you had like 14 fucking festivals that you were in. On top of that, you also joined the highest burlesque performer in the world in one of her shows, Dita Von Tees, and multiple shows. Yeah, over the, over the 10 years I've been doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what is next for Jezebel Thunder? Uh, <laughs> I know that's a weighted question, but it's fun because you can kind yeah. of, you, you know, we're in a middle of transformation, if you will. So yeah. it could be anything. What's next? I don't know. I just really hope to like keep doing burlesque stuff and then keep doing pinup stuff. And overall, overall, I would like to be like, someone who people can look at and just be like inspired by and know that they can do especially black women and know that they can do anything i mean they already know that we already know that but like this you know a gentle remind a gentle reminder <laughs> is something that is not to take for granted yeah a reminder you, of that yeah but you can you can do it all and the fun and the fun thing about it right now is that i love that you are always setting a goal for yourself but you already are an inspiration to so many people right now and that's the joy of watching that and I know it's weird to like hear that but it's so fun to say because it's true it's absolutely true you've created the idea of burlesque and we created ourselves like we were talking with Indigo last week it this is you like this isn't me helping you in that sense this is literally all of your work so it's something to be proud of you don't have to be cocky which you never are but i know you teeter on the humbleness and the like Ooh, i don't want to i know i'm always like that that somebody i don't want to be cocky like that's hard i mean we talk about that all the time i don't know re- i don't know the difference but you, <laughs> you know what i think of and i always mean to tell you and i don't it's kind of like like in beyonce beyonce is one of those people that i do feel is confident but not cocky and even though she throws the cockiness it's because first of all like yes please but she it's <laughs> but if, exactly if you were make if you had fourteen million people following you and all the money in the world and a fine and a husband I said fine ass husband. <laughs> I was about to say uh who does she <laughs> listen those lips I'm sure are doing her justice and that is all I'm gonna say about that um, but also on top of that something that I love about you in the pandemic throughout this couple last months is not only have you like kept furthering your game but you even elevated even more by producing your first show oh yeah yeah yeah. the lockdown get down how did that how did that how was that thanks for helping me get that promo going i just did a i just did a flyer y'all she did all the work (laughs) hosted hosted and produced it y'all i did that was crazy 
And that was a lot of fun. I want to do it again, but I want to do it. I mean, it was on Instagram Live. So it was a little, like, small thing. But I really want to, like, make it bigger. Because that was, like, something, again, we've talked about. But people out there might not know. That's something that I want to do. Like, that's a goal of mine is to, like, have an L.A. all-black cast show kind of and thing. That's, and, and that's so, what the Lockdown Gets On was, was an yeah. all-black, all-L.A. burlesque show. Yeah. So I want to do that. And so that's, like a big goal and that goes along with my same goal of wanting to like shift the mainstream idea of beauty and empower black women and black people in general so it's just like through my through my photography through my dancing through shows like any way i can how do you feel because i was talking a little bit with jake about it and i love this conversation so much because i don't know shit about it and I want to know so many different people's opinion. How do you feel about burlesque in the mainstream? And then on top of that, just like an added question for you, how do you feel that the Black community is responding to burlesque in all, I guess that's kind of such a weighted question, but in however all, you want to answer that. What, in like all of this pandemic situation? Just in the future, like how do you feel burlesque will, does burlesque have a place in the mainstream and how do you feel that black people and burlesque how do you feel i mean i guess that's such a fucking weird question (laughs) so many different people and there's so many ideas because it's like to me i know that cuban people can kind of be weird about it because it's like they think it's porn and they have all these preconceived notions so just bringing the idea of burlesque to cubans i know the way that it has worked for me is through teaching them that it's less of like showing them more comedic burlesque versus like sexy burlesque yeah i mean that yeah now i understand the question i think a little bit more but like i think there is a place for burlesque in the mainstream i just think i think it's helpful to have burlesque out there no matter what because i'm hoping it i my thing is that it'll shift people's thinking it needs to be in the mainstream because it needs to shift people's thinking because our society has deep rooted issues with sexuality and women's bodies and people of color so like burlesque is like I think burlesque is a perfect thing to have out in the mainstream world to show people. And, oh my God, I just came across this movie on Hulu, which I didn't like watch yet. because It's it's subtitles, so I didn't have the attention span the other day to watch it. (laughs) I didn't feel like reading, but it's a burlesque movie. I don't know if if I told you about it. It's called Burlesque. And it's, it's, I don't know what language it's in, but I saw the trailer and it's this woman who's like, um, she's a heavier set woman. And she, it shows her going through the process of like meeting a burlesque performer and then like, becoming empowered and confident through burlesque and it's like actually like they get her on stage doing an actual strip tease act they show her interacting with her boyfriend or like things like that like things that we go through and i was like who did this movie like it's it seems to be accurate from the trailer but again i have to watch it hey i'm gonna look that up right now because uh you said it's on hulu though yeah it's on hulu i'm gonna need your login i'm gonna need your login (laughs) Uh, but yeah so i think like burlesque needs to be in the mainstream I think like Jake and I have talked about how there needs to be like a burlesque show on Netflix or something that makes it, gives it a positive light. And then, you know, along with that, it'll shift everyone's thinking, but it will also shift like black people's thinking. Cause the same thing with like my family, my family thinks it's like the people who know, <laughs> they think it's like a bad, horrible thing. And it's like, uh, no, it's not. It's actually very empowering. And it like, you know, I'm taking ownership of myself. I'm having confidence that I never had in a million years because of it. Like, it does so much. It's so much more. Obviously, it's striptease, but it's so much more than striptease. And I've met it's, so many awesome people, like you and Jake and Rennie and Rex and everybody. <laughs> and that's the interesting thing that I take from that is that I do, yeah, the only way I can see burlesque hitting mainstream is for more positive looks like takes on it like more mm-hmm. show, like Jeezy being on the show easy on Netflix like that was the closest thing I could think of to what you were saying where it was such a realistic view of burlesque like even just knowing that it, like Jeezy's talking about the same shit on it that she actually talks about and how it's yeah. rough for burlesque performers even like a lot of people want to date burlesque performers until they actually date burlesque performers yeah. and just Ooh. and even the actual person that's going to take Jeezy's class in the show and how she and her partner deal with her finding this new art form that empowers her and mm-hmm. It's just such a, I get it too, because people have such fucked notions about pornography. So sexuality kind of falls under that umbrella. But it's really yeah. interesting to see how many people's minds click when they go to a show that connects to them. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I think like 
having black people come see even an all black show would be amazing. Like it's obviously happened with Jeezy. It happens a lot and it's grown bigger and bigger. And so many people have probably like it's blown their minds. It blew my mind the first time I did it. So I can't imagine if like there was more black, all black shows out there showcasing not only burlesque, but like a variety of things to get more people on board and feeling more empowered, you know, stuff like that. I completely agree. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I'm. that's the thing that I've always been trying to like figure out ways to because yeah, we do definitely need a lot more visual representation that shows burlesque in the positive light that it is because it's so funny how like if you see a bad burlesque show it totally fucks your vision of it just like yeah. anything just like a bad movie you yeah. might not watch the whole trilogy because the first one's fucking sucked but it's yeah. like if you give it a chance and realize that there's so many different versions of it and then there's so many shows that aren't even like categorized as burlesque shows but they contain burlesque in them mm -hmm. And there's so many yeah. versions of it. I think we were, like, I was talking to Jake earlier about the fact that it's, like, just little Kim walking around with her pasty out in 1999 at the Video Music Awards. Yeah. Burlesque. <laughs> yeah. You could say oh that was God. burlesque. And I was watching a clip of that the other day, and I, was, I, I remember, like, being younger and being like, ah! oh, my God. And then I watched it again, like, last week. I watched a little video or a movie, and it had that clip in there. And I was like, fuck yes, little Kim. Like shit, like. <laughs> and little Kim, and that's the thing. Little Kim was is slept on as one of the biggest feminists. Like she is, like name me rappers that bring all females together like little Kim did, and just yeah. the idea of smashing this like scene where rap was all about disgust, like basically sexualizing women and then having a woman sexualize men and herself yeah. and have that power. Yeah. I remember being too young to listen to that shit, but like, yeah. Well, I think the do the documentary I watched on H on Hulu, no, no, it was on Netflix. It was about hip hop and fashion and women and the impact it's had on you know society. And they said that Little Kim was one of the first ones to like be a female rapper who embraced her femininity because it was all about like wanted to be part, wanted to be like the boys and yeah. not being take and being taken seriously because you had to look like them. And she was the one that was like, and her stylist was like, no, we're gonna like be super feminine and. Wait, this is just it. for me. They clearly talked about TLC in a hip hop fashion documentary, right? Mm. I don't know mm. if they talked about them, but they did show the video in the opening of the documentary. And I almost texted texted you, but I was like, "Oh, I gotta watch this. I'll text him later about it." <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you don't need to. This is a disclaimer. You don't need to mention TLC. I mentioned them <laughs> a fucking enough already. My love, you also celebrated a 10 year anniversary last year in burlesque, not to try to age you or anything. Um, oh, do you see yourself doing this for as long as you can until the wheels fall off? <coughs> uh, I don't have COVID. I swear. <coughs> oh my God, no, she doesn't. No. That, I'm I'm I, I get such apparently. anxiety now to cough in public and I hate it because it's like a, like a breathe, breathe. It's kind of like when you want to sneeze yeah. and you hold it. I hate that, but hey, say la vie. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself doing this forever until they call you a legend? I hope so. I, I hope really so. hope so. I don't know. There's just so much power in burlesque. I wish more people would see it. Like how badass is that? Those are like older women, like, doing the damn thing on stage and being like and still inspiring people and also being like bowed down to because they're like still going and still owning their bodies and themselves and you know messing up mainstream idea of things like I love that I want that I hope that I in 2059 can push your ass <laughs> on a wheelchair down that fucking <laughs> stage no I don't want to be on a wheelchair I want to be like just walking <laughs> nobody like, said you're gonna shuffling. need <laughs> Nobody said that you're going to need the wheelchair. I'm just saying I'm going to push you on one. And then we're going to jump off the wheelchair. And then it's going to go, my anaconda don't. Oh, my, my God. <laughs> and then we're going to be a Boy Scout and a Girl Scout. I'm speaking this into existence. Look, I'm going to turn on these comments so people can be like, that's such a good idea. <laughs> that is a genius idea. I hope that happens. Ooh, it's going to happen, y'all. Let me tell you, by the end of 2021, I'm going to speak this into existence. And Jezebel Thunder has been around me a long time. She knows that I am Walter Mercado as shit when it comes to speaking shit into existence. <laughs> I'm saying that the Boy Scout Act is dead. The only way I'm going to do it from now on is if Jezebel Thunder is a Girl Scout next to me. Tell me how much you love that with the hearts. See? Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Well, we're gonna do it. We just need the costume. I need a costume. Oh, I I know that's gonna happen. I'm just speaking it out loud because we've never yeah. said it out loud to like the Every online community, you know. So now they're expecting it. So now they're gonna be like, 
when the fuck is this going to happen? That is very true. Accountability. The accountabilities. <laughs> okay? Yes. Accountabilities. Yes, yes. Sell these um, cookies, big friends? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come out I, eating Girl Scout cookies now. <laughs> we listen. I want to have a moment in the act where I can just grab a bunch of cookies and crunch them up and just like pour them down. And Jessica's oh. just like, oh, yeah. damn, just a box, a box of cookies. Oh my god, yes, that needs to be. The I'm end. telling y'all. Imagine yeah. this. Imagine this. I start out and it's like my anaconda don't, and then all of a sudden a DJ. DJ motherfucking like what I was trying to come up with like DJ Luke, DJ Uncle Al, rewind and it goes all the way back to the beginning and then Jezebel comes out as a Girl Scout. Y'all, I'm saying we should submit that as a best group to Burlesque Call of Fame next year. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine if I, can I get two trophies from that? <laughs> not a look, not a cookie ring. Jezebel Thunder, do you want to play a game with me? Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> that sounded like you asked answered a question with a question. This game I did. today is never have I ever. All right, we're gonna play a cute little game. This is basically yeah. just me asking the questions because I want to get to know my best friend a little bit better. <laughs> so uh, remember, there, this ain't Andy Cohen. You can't plead the fifth Dang on, the, on the, <laughs> but um, I'm allowing you not to drink alcohol. Fuck it, I'm not gonna lie to the people. I hate a liar. Um, so you have a buy drink, like uh, Justin Timber fake, buy, buy, buy. Um, oh. And I have... <laughs> Uh, and if you all don't know, we're going to have an episode all dedicated to how Justin Timber fake is one of the worst people in the history of time. No! Um, but I, do I, have, I have water in here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask a question. Never have I ever. And if you have done the thing, then you're going to take a drink. If you have not done the thing, you're just going to live your life and question okay. your morals, basically. Okay, okay, you ready? If I have done the thing, I take a drink. Okay. Yes. Never have I ever gone on a date with someone that I was not into. <laughs> Damn, I got to laugh on the first one, y'all. Have you ever been on a date with someone that you just weren't that into? Yes. What's happening? Mm. My head just fell off because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. That's how much, how many days she's been on where she did not want to like be this. They all knocked her hair off. That's how many people, that's how many guys she's been. Because that one's also segues into the next one, which is basically just, have you ever kissed someone that you weren't into? <laughs> I'm so mean. Well, that's alcohol. I've never been on a date, but I As definitely I laugh kissed, about it. I've definitely kissed people I did not want to. Um, yeah. Did you ever, have you never, have I ever played hooky from school or work? Have I played hooky from work? You never, I don't think you've ever skipped work. And in school, I don't think I have because I always feel super bad. In school, I never did. I can, I can totally see your guilt being like, bitch, you better be in class. You better tell I, me. Yeah. Care. I can't lie. I'm a horrible liar. Yeah, you'll call in. You won't really just like not be there. And this one's kind of the same, but different. But I just want to get to know you better. Never have I ever cheated on someone. What did we say? It was cheating. <laughs> Cheating means that you got to drink a little bit. <laughs> Let me tell y'all really quick, if you don't know, my taste in men is Jezebel Thunder. When Jezebel Thunder <laughs> tells me about how she feels about dating other people, those are exactly the men that I date. 100%. So I get to know what their mind's like. Uh, no, I've never cheated on someone, but yes, a, cheated on them as in them, as in them expecting to be monogamous and you keeping something from them. I didn't sleep with anybody. Oh. I might have made out and like got numbers and went on a date, I think. <laughs> with <laughs> someone that you were dating? When I was dating somebody, like when I was with somebody else. Yeah, I'm never dating your ass. Um... <laughs> Never it's have not I, funny. It's not. I shouldn't be laughing. It's not funny. You're that's, laughing that's, why single, that's why I'm single. Because that's why I'm. That's why you keep dumping me. It's because I'm a dick. <laughs> no, you. You just think like a man. A hundred and ten percent. Never have I ever had road rage. Oh, <laughs> you've heard that this was that this morning. You might need to this morning, my love. That's been the last eight years. I know, um, but was that this morning that I was yelling at people and cussing them out on the on the way to work? Yeah, that was this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one I love about you, but I've never done. Uh, I've never done this. Never have I ever gone to a bar by myself. Oh yeah, I've done that. 
I've never done that. And I always admire really? people. Unless I'm getting paid, I've never gone to a bar by myself. Like, I mean, I have a hard time sometimes in this city, but when I travel, like, I have no choice sometimes. Yeah, that's different. But yeah. I also feel like I hear a lot of people say that they've never been to the movies by themselves. And I go all the time when it used to be a thing. I did that once and I felt so weird. It felt so weird. I was like, uncomfortable for a while until the movie started then i was like okay <laughs> baby with the with the right weed <laughs> I don't you're just sitting weed. there like i know i know let's yeah, not talk different. about it. <laughs> uh, never have i ever had a three-way nope <laughs> Ooh. i was like your, three-way your that's mom's on here i don't give a shit she knows she's, she's um proud. i don't she's know proud. if she knows but she knows now <laughs> And if she doesn't know, the three-way was the minimum amount of people that I've had. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so. um, have you ever, never have I ever fallen asleep during sex, though? Oh, dang. It was that bad. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I was <laughs> drinking it because I was just thirsty. <laughs> no, never. That's really sad. If, if, he, if someone does, damn, that's really. You need Can you imagine you're in the middle of a thrust and he's just like, in his third dream? Yeah. <laughs> That's I'd horrible. Sorry. I would be, I would have, oh my God, I can't even imagine how I would feel about that. Being the one who fell asleep or the one who didn't fall asleep. Either way, that's terrible. <laughs> no, I've actually, the entire situation fucking sucks. Um, all right, last one, last one. And I hate to okay. see you go, but you know, I love to watch you walk away. Um, never have I ever regretted an apology. My mom said goodnight. Bye, Lourdes. <laughs> Good night. Make a Wait. choice as I worry about you. Never have I ever regretted an apology. That means I, I said you sorry. And you yeah. didn't mean it. And you regretted even saying it to them. No. You have I always try to mean what I say. Or don't say. If you can't say something nice, don't say it at all. <laughs> Listen, my mom says that. And uh, that is fine if you're a regular ass person. But we're artists. <laughs> all right? Artists. Jezebel Thunder, is there anything you would like to tell the people before you go? No. I don't <laughs> think so. That first one got me. Like, my hat flew off because I'm just, <laughs> I'm such a dick. That was amazing. <laughs> y'all, if you like what you see today, please tip my girl. I know y'all ain't tipping for shit in this show, but please throw my girl some money so that she can put on the next installment of the Lockdown Get so Down. I can go on a date with somebody else and then not like No, no, no. This I'm is a kidding. pandemic. <laughs> this is a pandemic. You can sit your ass at home like the rest of us, not getting anything. Shout out to Fathom's deep fine ass and audience being like, what's up? Uh, uh, I love you so much. You're literally this shit. If any, if you want to find out more about Jezebel Thunder, you make sure to follow her, JezebelThunder.com. You can find her yeah. everywhere. She is brilliant. The TikTok has made her comedic. The producing oh has got her hosting. This child can do everything. So tell her <laughs> yeah. if she could do everything, she can get a Girl Scout outfit. Okay. I love you. <laughs> I love, I love you, you too. So You're I the shit. You I love you so much, Jezebel. I'll talk to you probably right after this airs. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. I'm going to watch Drive safe. Drive safe. I love you. I love you. Bye. Oh, my God. I love that woman way too damn much. Jezebel motherfucking thunder, y'all. What? Why is that person so fucking perfect? I love her too damn much. All right, y'all. Before I bring on our second uh, guest, I always try to throw this out there really quick because I really want it to be croquetas. So we're going to try really quick. Croquetas, croquetas. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Oh, damn. Never going to get a croqueta, am I? Um, also, really quick, I do want to shout out our sponsors. We have uh, Ever After Creations. If you want to get some custom masks, shirts, sweatshirts, pants, whatever the fuck you want that can be printed on, my girl Emily's got you at Ever After Creations with an extra S because she's a little pobrecita. Um, check them out on Instagram. Also, check out Aim to Wash Bidets. Why need toilet paper when you could just wash your ass with some water? Um, make sure you check them out. They're dope as shit. And... Uh, I meant to say that. <laughs> All right, y'all. Moving on. We have an amazing, incredible, iconic person hitting this chat right now. So without further ado, y'all, I want you to spread your legs because no one's watching. And welcome to your screens oh, with a face like Ken and a booty like fucking Barbie. What's up, Jake Dupree? Oh, hello, doll. How are Hi, you? Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Look at you with your little Venmo information that I... Woo -woo. 
Guys, like what you see today, you can make sure to throw him some monties. How are you doing, Marla? I'm doing well. I'm just uh, got done talking to you about an hour ago. So (laughs) I'm feeling real good. (laughs) I love it. I love that you talk to me so much. I'm allowed to talk to. It's, Um, it's It's always a good conversation for sure. So anybody that knows, because I love uh, Jeez Louise because she is my best friend and she's the most honest person in the world. When I told her who the guests were today, she was like, haven't they already been in this fucking show before? (laughs) So I'm having Jake and Jezebel back because those episodes did not save. So I want to promote, especially my best friends, uh, a little bit more. So and they're helping me figure out a way. And Jake Dupree, y'all, is the person that was motivating me to even fucking do this show. So if you like this uh, fun kind of moment, then you have him to blame. Uh, (laughs) Yes. If you like it, you know, either way, talk to his ass. Jake Dupree, what is it that you can't do? Why is it that all of my friends are so multifaceted and brilliant and artistic? I feel like you have to do that around here, though. It's like there's never going to be enough work of what you like truly want to do. So you got to figure out other things that you like sort of as much, you know. So it's like if there's a task being thrown at you, you got to like answer it and be there, you know. That's true. Well, so besides becoming a boylesque star in the last, it's been two years? Two One years. Year. Which is, no, yeah. It's like, yeah, two years. Two years. Was it October 2018? It was September. Don't tell of me what it could not have been last year. September of 2018. That's what I thought. Okay, yes. When you yes. first your first burlesque show, but you've been in the entertainment scene for a fucking minute. You have been. Yeah. You were like, yes, bitch. Let me sing my accolades. I was like, you better tell me. <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you. So besides being on Cosmo, you're a fitness expert. You have workouts with Pop Sugar. Have you always been a like? focus on your body and health or is that something that kind of started later in life i mean uh as as like a competing gymnast for all those years like that you know that's just a part of my everyday life truly but i don't think i took it seriously until i after college i graduated and went to new york city and i got a trainer when i was there and he's the one that sort of kind of told me he was like you're really good at this you should consider thinking about it and I was like I don't know like I just you know I didn't and then when I moved out to LA that's whenever I like really took it to an even even bigger level and then in LA have you what made you start kind of this thinking of the fact that you could do burlesque especially as a man we know this is predominantly a female identifying art form but obviously everyone is welcome and I love hearing everyone's different kind of way that they got into it so did you ever see yourself before that audition for Dita Von T's doing burlesque? Or was that something that you started finding out as you did that? Well, I always, I always wanted to, and I was such a big fan of burlesque. Um, I actually did a burlesque show in college. A girl in college did a hers like graduate thesis project about burlesque. It was definitely an it was definitely not a burlesque show fully but I did this number where all these girls like stripped me and it was great and I loved it um but my first like um like in-person burlesque show was at Dwayne Park in New York City I was dating a guy who lived there and I flew from Savannah College to go see him and he took me there and he was like I think you will love this and I was obsessed I was like this is truly amazing um I think the first guy I ever saw do burlesque was you which is so funny and I love that. Which is, I'm sorry to hear that. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I, I don't actually, even. Dwayne Park is such, Dwayne Park is such a phenomenal like first show to see. I've actually never seen it, but I've watched their social media and everyone posting those shows look. Um, and New York is always gag worthy for burlesque. Like that's without a lie, one of the best first experiences to watch burlesque. It's amazing. I mean, it's did you? So were cool the, and there was because of the venue. True. Do you remember the first performers that were in that show that you saw? I or who your favorite was that night? I don't. I literally, I wish I did know that, but it was, I mean, this was like 12 years ago. So I don't, I don't, I just don't remember. Oh. I, I know it was women only, obviously, but uh, I just like fell in love. And then whenever I moved to LA, I came to Tease View, please, for the first time. And that's there. I saw Jess and I saw you and Donna and Miranda and Tosca and... Natasha, 
I think that's I think that was like the first people I saw. And then I saw um Lily Faye and uh um who else was there? I can't even remember, but I mean I was just like yeah, was- I remember leaving there I remember leaving there and being like, oh, I wish I could do that so badly. I just wish I could. And I think that I thought that because, you know, people like Violet Tchotchke are seeing people in, you know, like, I thought that that's how a guy could do burlesque because I didn't see it. I didn't see myself being as funny as like you are. So it's like, I don't, I don't know. I just didn't think it would ever happen to be honest. And it's interesting because it's like, from the many different ways that I've seen men get into burlesque, you have one of the most like polished ways to get into burlesque and to still hear that there's even those insecurities, insecurities kind of sucks, but it's also amazing because burlesque is so welcoming. And no, you don't have to be any sort of thing. You just have to be like my, I always say my favorite advice was be yourself. And I always thought that was so weird because especially like as an actor, as a dancer, you know, you have to, be the character that they're paying you to be. And that's usually not yourself. Maybe there's like hints of it, but yeah. in order for you to do burlesque, you have to be a hundred percent yourself because you have to do it all yourself. And it's fun too, because you don't have to even put stick with the limitations that you might even put yourself in when you first start. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so interesting because it's like the way that I get to perform now and do is how I've always wanted to perform. And it was always like all these opportunities of dance stuff for me. It was just always like, you know, ensemble member and, you know, a musical and stuff, which is amazing. And I love that stuff, but it's, it's not exactly, but you have to pretend to be like straight or pretend to be this or like, you know, butch it up or whatever. And I hate that phrase so much. I think that that is just so problematic and so troubling to like, even tell anybody to behave like that. It's like, that's so boring to me get out of here. <laughs> and it's, of course, there's so many, there's so many stories to tell. And like Jess was saying, cause I know we were talking about mainstream and burlesque being in the mainstream, but it's true. It's like the more people see the positive aspects of burlesque, the more that they're going to feel related to it, which will inevitably make it accessible to everyone, which is God, that would be, and I, that's one of my favorite things about you. One of my favorite things about you is the fact that you do look at burlesque and you don't look at it like a hobby. You look at it as the career that it, can and is like it it's what you make it so there's no and no one can tell you because i remember my favorite thing about you too which is indirect but it is you proved it wrong and i love that is i remember always hearing how male burlesque would never work in west hollywood and when i saw you making it a louder impact in West Hollywood versus like some of the shows that are in regular shows, I knew that there is like everyone, it's for everyone. And for yep. anyone, even in the burlescing to say things like, oh, this wouldn't work there. It shows what they think about the future of this art form or how far they can take it and not necessarily how far anyone can take it. So totally. I mean, I, I it's, it's crazy that there was never like that much. There was like truly no, presence like in the like burlesque world like with west hollywood too like i i didn't even know that and you were the one that told me that and i just was i, I was dumbfounded by that because you would think that in a neighborhood that is about acceptance and you know expressing yourself they'd be more in tune with wanting that to be there but turns out or just no. naked men like i get the idea of like I just also, when I first started, I always thought of like it as being, if I want to perform and create my own things and direct and write my own stuff, I have to be a drag queen. And when yep. I gave it like chance after chance, I realized that it just wasn't for me. And I, and it, I respected too much to do it as badly as I was doing it. So <laughs> I love the you idea. Are, of- you look amazing. Don't even. 10 years later, honey. Ten- two, two, and, I need, and I need a pinche, a vazig few. I needed a whole town to make her not look as cochina as she fucking is. <laughs> but, when the real, but when the real world comes back to it, I definitely never want to sleep on Dina again. I would love to make her a character and I would love to be a drag queen with you one night, whether we're doing a show or we're just Halloween it up or we're just going on the We town. should just like, go out. Like, them. let's just go out. But that's what I'm saying. When we're able to, I want to, I, I still got my wig. I've been... I've been learning how to apply makeup so I can be one step ahead of RuPaul. 
I got so mad at that. Jake revealed to me, y'all, and I know that everyone knows this, but that RuPaul, after all these years, doesn't know how to do his own makeup or just refuses to do his own makeup, which I think is really the case. I mean, he doesn't have to kind of anymore, diva, you know? Yeah, it's kind of amazing that he doesn't have to. I mean, yeah, I know, but if you have to, but if you have to do it, <laughs> I want to know if he can do it. I want to know. I don't I know if you actually. Would, I, don't, I don't know if you would actually want to know that. If I would like ruin everything. For I, bet you. You, I bet you. I bet it's a diva thing where he's just like, I don't have to do it. Like I've literally been doing it for so fucking long, y'all. Like unless y'all are paying me, because I hear that. Like I hear that business mindset. And that's the thing in burlesque, there's not a lot of people, there are, but in burlesque, there can be like a torn kind of middle where some people are doing it as a business and then some people aren't. So you have that mentality of like, if you're kind of doing it as a hobbyist, it probably won't grow to its full potential as if you treat it like a business, which it is. Totally. And you have to treat it like that if you want to take it anywhere. True. And remember, like I always say, if... I cannot wait to be rolling down the Burlesque Hall of Fame in 2059 with all of y'all. Wheelchairs, fucking mobile devices. I'm going to still be in my Boy Scout outfit, hella old. I, when, once, my butt, once my butt falls, I'm going to for sure get some nice lift back there with something to help it. So I can be the butt forever. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to always be the ass. I imagine you're going to be like uh, a lot of these 85 to 100 year old people that I see on TikTok that are still super, super in shape and I like mean, yes. you look young as fuck. I will for sure true, do like, anything it, that helps me. I will for sure do it. Listen, I'm, in, I'm the only thing I'm going to fix is this receding hairline that's happening to my life. That's the only thing I want to fix. The rest of me, I want to look like an older version of me. Like every time I see one of those filters, the only thing I hate is when my hair has disappeared. But the wrinkly, like I want to be the silver fox of burlesque, y'all. I want to be, fro- I want to be marble. That's what I want to be. <laughs> Frozen. Listen, uh, Sheila, Star- Sheila Starciani just sent you a question, which was more of a comment than it was a question. And then Sheila said, no, your butt will never fail, Jacob. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> it's it's so fierce, you can bounce a quarter off of that shit. I mean, but you know what I'm saying? Everything starts to go as you get a little older. So it's like, it depends. If I, got, if I, if I, can, if I can afford to do it, you bet your ass I'm going to. It depends, you might just look at, not only does it depend, it depends. It depends. Uh, <laughs> it, depends it depends on what, uh, what you're doing with your life, you might, you might be, because the thing is, you're also helping other people achieve their body goals because you're on Patreon and you have amazing workouts there. Uh, yeah. and it's cheap as fuck to join them too. It's cheaper than a fucking Planet Fitness membership. I mean, it's 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 a steal. So do it. So make sure you check out Jake's. Uh, it's the link is in your bio, right? It is. It is. And of course, everything you need about Jake is jakedupree.com. I love that my friends are so business-minded that they all have .coms. We don't play this shit. It's 2020. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You, uh-uh. This is my where's your where, dot w- org? <laughs> dot dot t- dot .tv. <laughs> Listen, dot .tv can work, but I don't got a TV show yet. I want to <laughs> I, I wanna play this game with you really quick. But before I get uh, the game started, I do want to promote the fact that you are going to be a part of Michelle Lamore's uncensored show and that's gonna be next week august 14th you just filmed for that i did and it now, is quite scandalous now and that's where i'm going with this now because it says the word uncensored are we going to get a uncensored look at take a gander at the goods or is this just do we just have to wait and pay for it and see yeah. You're not going to see the front door, but you might see the back door. Listen, knock, knock. I'll come in whatever fucking way I need. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think there's got to be there's got to be something that I keep for myself. You know what I mean? Yes. The one thing that I amongst many things that I love about you is that not only are you a vision on stage, you can devour any fucking audience in the world, but you can also devour everyone backstage because you were one of the fucking nicest, hardest working people that I see. And it is very easy to meet a lot of people who can be crazy or whatever and it's like you are so amazing and i i'm very i will say this to you every day but i want to say it on the <laughs> internet 
I am just so grateful that you are adding to the art form of male burlesque because that shit is dying. <laughs> that is a dying art form, but it's not dead. It's just uh -uh. coughing a little dust right now. No, it's so you it's wake, a full it's, it's like later right now. It's like no, it's like if we were the Spice Girls still trying to make it happen without all of the working members, but like all of a sudden Adele joins. And then you're like, wait, what? Like yeah. this is the shit. Also, I love I'm, this. You say I'm I'm Adele. The new version? Uh, I was like, yeah, I don't even, I, I want any version. If that's what you're comparing me to, I will gladly take it. You are literally the Adele breathing new life <laughs> into the group. And you've been a You've been a part of the male burlesque show that we were doing at Fault Line since day one. So happy anniversary to you as well. Well, thank if you, you for creating it. And listen, I would not have been able to if it wasn't for people like you, Kirby Labrea, people who are, even after me living here eight years, I've seen, there was a lot more male burlesque performers when I first started out oh, here really? in LA. And to see it kind of dwindle and then just kind of, still find its momentum it's people like you kirby me like all these people that i really appreciate so it's not just my ass doing shit it's a fan it's a family affair we are a family like a dragon Poppy, uh i'm gonna need to see that episode of the doctors you were on by the way so i'm gonna need you to forward me oh that, I, don't, uh, I don't even know if i have it anymore i mean that was like i did two episodes i don't i don't even know if i have them I'm gonna need you to that ask like your parents. At the beginning, so it was definitely not as like cool, you know. It's always cool, bitch. If I was on the doctor, I don't listen. I've been on TV that I'm embarrassed about, and I'm still proud about it. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed by it. I just think that there's you've you've seen the goods, you know, you've seen the good stuff. So listen, everything that you produce is good shit. Um, Jake Dupree, do you want to play a game with me? Yeah, I would love to play a game with you. <laughs> You're like, hurry the fuck up. I thought we were playing a game this whole time. Give me the uh, game. I'm going to... So last time Jake was on, just because I want this also to be said, uh, so that it knows, because bragging rights, Jake Dupree played the first ever named Night Stripper game produced uh, by Jeez Louise. And Jake got every single one of them right without a cheat sheet. Swear to Lisa Left Eye Lopez. Um, so I do want to talk about the fact that you are undefeated. You are a champion. What? Uh, yeah, or well, not undefeated because other people have done the same I thing. Was like, I was like, I feel like it. other people. Like you did it, you did it, you did, and I, and I let you have it. Those are some hard ass ones. Um, so we're <laughs> gonna play a game of one of my favorite games, fuck, marry, and kill. Ooh, I love it. And so the people, some I've actually heard some people don't know this game. So I'm gonna turn on the comments just to have fun, and people can show you love if they want to. Um, look, uh, Agate Gay Gay Atari says Jake, your workout trans formed me i'm gonna need some photos i'm gonna uh, need... i would love that i would um, love to see some photos we want you to send some photos so fuck marry and kill is i'm gonna show three people on this and jake is going to tell me okay. why he would fuck marry and kill each one of them not you have to pick and choose obviously not just fuck marry and kill each one of them um so the first okay. one is going to be three cast members from the hit tv show pose we got uh, okay. <laughs> Pray Tell, Little Poppy, and then we got Blanca. <gasps> this is so bad. I don't want to kill any yeah, of them. Right. They're and all I was amazing. Gonna do... <laughs> okay. Um, Listen, you can make your rules as you want. You don't have to kill them. You can just have reasons why you're doing what you're doing. I won't say kill, but I'll say kindly step to the side so I can make room for these two. <laughs> Um, um, I will say, uh, I will, uh, I will marry MJ Rodriguez at the bottom. I will fuck Angel. And I'm sorry, Billy Porter, but kindly step to the side. <laughs> Damn, that's that so was exactly, sad. That makes I me so that sad. That makes me really sad. But that's just the truth. That's what it is. Okay, go. Look how my look how my face got red because it's the same thing and I hate it. But I'm also like I wanted to have an opinion on it too, and that's literally exactly. We love you, Billy Porter. Billy Porter is literally the shit. And as like Billy Porter love. says, we will not accept your tolerance. We will demand your respect. So very that, very that. Y'all know it. 
If y'all don't tr if y'all don't respect every single person as a human being and equal, then guess what? We don't have to respect your ass. Um, moving along, we're gonna go to one of my favorites, which kind of incorporates one of your acts. Uh, this is a Batman themed one, and this is going to be who would you fuck, Ooh. marry, and kill? The I think they're the sirens, the Gotham sirens, uh, Harley Pretty Quinn, much, yeah. Poison Ivy, and Catwoman. I love that illustration. Um, so this is tough. This is so tough. Um, I would I would marry Catwoman because I want to be around her as much as possible because I love her. I will. This is so tough. I will fuck Poison Ivy because I think it would be great, and she would like all up in my head. And um, so I guess what I, I guess I have. I'd probably have to kill Harley Quinn. She's fabulous. You know what I mean? She's just a little off. She'd be fun. I think it's to, a little off. So I'm, I'll just say that. I'm I'm conv I'm convinced that Harley Quinn would probably be the best sex, honestly, of all of them. She's yeah, just poison ivy that so shit crazy, sexy. pun intended. But depending on the poison ivy, you can't even kiss her because she's gonna get you all poison and shit. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. I guess I'm. I guess it's worth but, dying for. But the you know it's true, and the environmental benefits of being with poison ivy would probably outweigh having the sexual desires. Global um, warming. Hello. Oh my god! I showed you right away. But I'm picking three of the pussycat dolls, and Nicole is excluded because she already gets everything she fucking wants, and Kimberly is also okay. excluded because you are Kimberly. You cannot love yourself enough. So we are going to let you okay. pick from the newest version of the Pussycat Dolls. Fuck Melody. We don't know her. Carmeet, <laughs> who's the best? Jessica and Ashley. And Who would Ashley. you fuck Mary and Kevin? I would I would Oh no, this is so sad. You better say um, Carmeet. I would I would I would marry Carmeet because she can really dance and she can really sing. I would I would fuck Ashley, and I'm sorry, Jessica, but kindly step to the side. I like how this has become kindly step to the side, marry and kill. Yeah, I just think kill so I'm aggressive. Loving... I don't want to do it. I want to do it. But it's, it's just picking the lesser, you know, it's just picking know. between these. Now, I know. now this one's going to be very hard, and this is going to be the one that I'm going to leave you off with. Um, oh, my God. This has five people in this has five people in it, so you already know who it is. We just referenced them. Oh, and you are yes. going to have to pick three of them. The, the other two, it's not sashay away. It's, bitch, you don't, you don't live in this group anymore. We're replacing you like Destiny. You don't go so here. So tell me of the Spice Girls. Of the Spice Girls. Wait, I'm posh. <laughs> you better get that hand. Um, I will... I will marry Jerry because she's my fave. And it was just her birthday. And um, yes, that's true. Happy birthday, Ginger. Thanks for coming it. back to the I have, I have her Playboy on my wall. Um, I would, I would, I would probably fuck Mel B because, I mean, hello, she is like, the she's so piercing. hot. She's so hot. And she would like, she would give it, she would give you a good one. And I guess I'd probably have to kill, I'd probably have to kill Posh because she didn't come back for the reunion. So I don't have time for you. I don't have time for you. If you're not game, I'm not doing it. So bye. Next. You know, I, I, tweeted, <laughs> I tweeted once that I was like, damn, I wish TLC and Spice Girls would go in concert together. And then Chili retweeted it. And then an article was written about it. And now Chili reposted it. And I'm like, oh, my God, if they could get the well, two of them together, y'all. You know, you know what would be amazing if it was TLC, Spice Girls, like, 3LW, Bewitched, like, get them all, get them all. Listen, 3LW with a little, like, thing and be like, I'm getting a little tired of it, broken premises, broken premises, premises, premises. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, my God, I love you. You have my heart. Shout out to Donna Hood, uh, producer of Tease, if you please, that's in the motherfucking house right now, uh, showing Let's us love her. because I know Jake because of D Donna, so I love you for that, uh, amongst other things. Jake Dupree, before I let you go, is there anything that you want to let the kids know that you're doing besides Michelle's show next week on August 14th on Censor? Um, any message? Or do you just want to give everyone a big middle finger? I would say my message is there's some holes in this house. <laughs> <laughs> 
Listen, not trying, not you are going not to trying, be the new, you're gonna you're gonna be the new wet ass pussy of burlesque. <laughs> That's my only goal in life is to be that. So thank you. Listen, like they say, any hole is a goal. And I got one of them. So there's that. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to do the math on that and get back to us. But Jake, I love you so much. You are literally the shit. I love you so much. Thank you for joining us again. Um, call me anytime you want, daddy. I love you. I love you. Bye. Love Everyone you. say bye to Jake. <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye. Oh, I love bye. that motherfucker. Uh, give it up for Jake and Dupree, everybody. Damn. My heart is full after talking to those incredible burlesque stars and well-rounded individuals. So I hope you guys had a good time today. Remember, check us out every Friday, the Tito Bonito Show, right here on Instagram. It's also going to be on YouTube. So go to my bio if you want to find out more on how to support my broke ass during this pandemic. Also this week, tomorrow, I'm going to be in three fucking places at once. I'm going to be a part of the virtual burlesque call of fame that's happening every Saturday in August. Uh, I'm doing a little hosting segue tomorrow in Art House, produced by Bazooka Joe and Midnight Martini. I'm also going to be a part of The Dollhouse that's hosted by LaDonna Moore, and that's going to be on Facebook. I posted about that today. And then on top of that, live every Saturday, if you're in the San Diego area, we are mayor-approved, socially distanced, outside. You can check us out, Ooh La La Review, every Saturday. I'm hosting and performing with Donna Hood. So you definitely want to go see that. Limited seating. Come check us out. It is a good-ass fucking time. Um, on top of all of that, I'm just going to leave you off with next week's special guest. I'm very excited. We have Fit and Bendy owner and contortionist star Christina Nakaya. And then we also have uh, an incredible human being who is doing so much for uh, our country and politics right now. We have uh, maybe a girl who will be joining us as well. And also some future guests that I'm very excited about, but I don't want to tell you about now so you can tune back in. Uh, that is my time. I am your host of Cuban Missile Crisis. Check me out, titobonito.com. Check out jezebel.com, jezebelthunder.com, and Jake Dupree. Dot com and i hope to see you all live very soon but in the meantime i hope to catch you next week bye y'all make good choices i worry about y'all